A civil trial is underway over a magazine columnist's allegation that former President Donald Trump raped her more than two decades ago. Political correspondent Lisa Desjardins takes a look at the lawsuit and the assault allegations against the former president. And a warning, this story contains details of those sexual violence allegations. It's the latest legal battle involving former President Trump. E. Jean Carroll, a magazine advice columnist, has accused Trump of raping her in the mid-90s. In a civil lawsuit filed in New York, Carroll is seeking unspecified damages for the alleged assault. She also accuses Trump of defaming her character. The trial is expected to last for one or two weeks. Carroll says the assault took place in a dressing room inside Bergdorf Goodman, a New York department store. Here's how she described it to CNN in 2019. He pulled down my tights. And uh, it was a fight. It was a, I want women to know that I did not stand there. I did not freeze. I was not paralyzed, which is a reaction that I could have had because it's so shocking. No, I fought. Uh, and um, it was over very quickly. It was against my will, 100%. Carol revealed the story 20 years after she says it happened in her 2019 memoir. She can go to court now because New York lawmakers passed a new state law allowing victims of abuse to file civil lawsuits against attackers, even if the statute of limitations has run out. The former president has repeatedly denied that he raped Carol and accused her of lying. In an interview with The Hill, he said Carol was, quote, not my type. He also previously claimed that he had never met Carol, but her attorneys have provided the court with a picture of them talking at an event in the 80s. Trump is not expected to testify in this trial, but two other women who have accused Trump of assault have been cleared to do so. Jessica Leeds alleged Trump groped her on a flight in 1979, and People magazine writer Natasha Stoinoff has accused him of groping her in 2005 at Mar-a-Lago while she was there to interview him. More than two dozen women have accused Trump of sexual misconduct. He has charged that the stories are fabricated and politically motivated. Carol's defamation allegation is part of a separate suit filed in D.C. That has been indefinitely delayed. Today in Manhattan, a jury was selected and both sides presented opening arguments in this case. Washington Post reporter Shana Jacobs covers two of New York's federal court districts and was in the courtroom today, and she joins us now. Shana, take us into the courtroom. What did each side seem to indicate about their approach to this case? Each side presented a vastly different version of events. On Carol's side, um, her attorney said that Carol was violently assaulted in the dressing room at Berg Bergdorf Goodman in the mid 1990s, uh, and that she, you know, fled from the store, uh, to immediately to told two close friends. Uh, and kept it a secret for decades because she was terrified that Trump could ruin her life and ruin her career. Uh, at the time, he was a very, um, very prominent real estate uh, professional, and obviously his profile only rose since then. Um, Trump's attorney um, says this entire thing was made up and that uh, Carol and her two friends actually colluded to come up with this story uh, because of a political vendetta against him once he, uh, once he was elected. The judge in this case is known for being no-nonsense, trying to move things along. Help us understand the judge and the jury here, including how the judge is keeping the jury safe and how in the world do you pick a jury that is neutral about Donald Trump? So not even the judge knows their identities. They are o known only um, by their assigned juror number. Um, there was not much uh, biographical information made public during the voir dire process. And um, they will also be picked up off-site um, by courthouse staff and driven to the courthouse so that they don't even have any chance of interacting with anyone outside the building or, or in the hallway. Um, they're really very, very protected from any possible uh, interaction with someone they're not supposed to see or speak to. Um, and uh, again, not, e not even the judge has their identities in front of him. So it's uh, basically as private as it 
private a process as it could possibly be. And on the question of neutrality, I, see, I, I saw that jurors were asked if they've been to rallies, that, those kinds of things. Is that how they did that? Yeah, I mean, it was posed to the, you know, the, the, the entire room of potential jurors. And, uh, it, you know, instead of going one by one and asking that, um, anybody who had been to a rally, anybody with an affiliation, uh, really a, a, with a, a sort of like more extreme um, group on the spectrum, both left and right, you know, some of the names that were thrown out were Proud Boys, Oath Keepers. QAnon, uh, Antifa. So they were asked, are you a member of, or are you affiliated with any of these groups? And um, I, be I believe nobody raised their hand to that question. If they had raised their hand, I imagine they'd have been uh, dismissed. What does Ms. Carroll need to show here in this civil trial to be successful in her lawsuit? What does she need to prove? Eugene Carroll. Yeah, she has to prove um, a, by a preponderance of the evidence, which is uh, really essentially means more likely than not uh, that she was um, that she suffered uh, harm as a result of this emotional harm, um, and that uh, that her career and her live uh, livelihood was damaged, that she suffered reputational damage um, as a result of what Donald Trump said, uh, really though specifically just what he said last year in a social media post, uh, which mirrored comments he made to uh, reporters in 2019 when this first came out. So uh, it's sort of like a duplicate set of defamation charges. There's a separate lawsuit still pending um, in an appellate court uh, for the older defamation claims from 2019. Um, but she is, this trial does contain defamation and, um, and battery allegations related to the alleged assault. The former president has given some testimony and deposition. He's not expected, I don't think, to be a live witness yet. But do we know if he'll be in the courtroom or what does that look like? Uh, his attorney has not, uh, last I saw, I did uh, leave a little bit before the proceeding ended, but last I saw and heard, um, his attorney, Joe Sacobina, has not fully committed either way. Um, he did tell the jury that he expected they would hear his uh, videotaped deposition from last year. Um, so all indications are that he's not going to testify. Uh, I, I, that still leaves open the mm. possibility that he might appear in the courtroom just to physically be there at one point or another. Um, but we have not heard any definitive uh, thing that would lead us to believe he'll, he'll be there in the next few days or next week. Shana Jacobs of The Washington Post, thanks for joining us, especially when you're on deadline. Thank you.